Hey guys, welcome to a new series here I'm starting on YouTube of the game Moonlighter. I've played the game a little bit, about nine hours, I've gotten pretty far, but I was like, you know what, I kind of want to play through it again, and this time I want to post it on YouTube because it is actually really fun, and I really do enjoy it a lot. I'm going to choose very hard as the difficulty because, what, why not, I've played through the game a couple times, well, once, uh, so I may as well do, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit more of a challenge, because, yeah, may as well challenge myself a little bit, why not? Got a little intro here. So the game, it's pretty fun. I actually really enjoy it personally. It's kind of my style of game. You, there are four dungeons, and the goal is to open up a fifth dungeon. To open the fifth dungeon, you need a key from each of the four dungeons to unlock the door, obviously. Um, so you start off pretty weak, very weak actually. And the way that you get stronger in this game is you beat monsters, you get items, you sell those items in your store, and then with that money that you make, you can buy items, weapons, you can buy enchantments, potions, lots of stuff. And then you get stronger, you go back in the dungeon, you try to get deeper and deeper and deeper until you get to that point to where you can find the key. So I really enjoy this style of game. It's really simple, pretty simplistic, but I really enjoy it. So let's, uh, let's start up here. Okay, got a little tutorial level for the first episode because there is a lot of tutorial to go through. Not not a ton, but enough where, you know, got to get through it. So, you can move around obviously. Good to know. You can do a little roll with the left trigger, which is very nice. You can use your roll to hop over pits. See, if I miss time it, I'll fall down, take damage, and then that's that. But if I time it right, I can jump right over. Very helpful. If I run into this guy, it does 180,000 damage, which is a lot. A lot of damage, one shot. But if I roll through him, I take no damage at all. So you got to keep that in mind as well. I can also roll through shots from monsters as well, and attacks. Lots of iframes, very nice. I can break these pots with my basic attack, so I'll use the broom that I have here, and I can attack with the A button on my Xbox controller. And I'm also going to break these pots because they give you some potions, so that's a little helpful tip for you. Break all these, get all these potions, and I'll roll my way to the next tutorial level. So if you press and hold X, you'll do a special attack. So depending on your weapon, it'll change. So for the spears, like this broom I have here, I'll charge up in this little form. And then when there's that little white flash and I let go, I do a little running poke. Which is pretty nice. So let's use it against this guy here. So it did 12, 22 damage, which is double my normal attacks damage, so very effective. I got another potion. Open up these chests, and I got some items there. So over here on the top right, you can see monsters equals lock chests. No monsters equals open chest. So once I killed that monster, it unlocked the chest, and I can get the goodies that are locked inside. Little tip for you, you're going to die at the end of this tutorial, so put all your luscious items into your personal storage. So you have five slots in your personal storage, little line, and then you've got these 15 slots in your backpack. When you die in this game or faint, all the items in your backpack will fall away and disappear. But any items you have in your personal storage will stay with you. So you want to try to keep all your good, precious items that you don't want to have lost in that spot. Uh, I actually want these two potions more than I want these foundry rooms. Uh, actually, I want these. No, no. Yeah, yeah. This is good. Okay. Because those potions are helpful. And this is where I die. There's these little portals. And they're just going to keep summoning monsters until I die. Yeah, I'm just going to die. So I'll just, I'll just accept my fate. Death is imminent. I accept my fate. There goes all my items. Rest in peace. And it kind of just spits me out. Bleh. Old man Z coming to save me.
It's nice of him saving me like that. Bring me back home. Here's a little store. I just really love the animations and the art of this game. Notes I have. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Uh, smart kid. You can see there it's, it says merchant in blue, which means I'm a merchant. He's kind of explaining what I am. I'm a merchant. So I'm not really a fighter. I'm a lover. I'm a merchant. I'm a guy who sells people stuff. I'm the last of my family. The only one left to run Moonlighter. Moonlighter is the uh, store. And that's the goal is to get to that fifth door. So artifacts are like those items I had in the chest or the little um, items that the monsters drop. They're called artifacts in this game. Um, so you find those artifacts in the dungeon and then you escape using your pendant, which is a fun uh, item you get. I'll show you when we go to the dungeon for the first time. What? Stop using the broom. The broom is OP, I'm telling you. The broom is busted. It does way too much damage. 11 damage per poke is unheard of. Uh, but a sword and shield does look a little better. So I'll, I'll have to pass on the broom. So now we're going to do a little tutorial of the shop and how to run the store. Which is good. So let's do that. So successfully selling your merchandise takes knowledge of two things. You must know of an item's value and its demand. So value is obviously how much you sell an item for. That's pretty pretty obvious. Self-explanatory. This one's for 100, this one's for 170. And then demand is based on how needed that item is in the um, the town so you saw this little expression there that's how you know if the, the price is right if you will that guy that came in and bought that hundred dollar one that one was a happy face a very content face this guy I'm selling it for 170 and he's sad yeah I don't think I need to tell you that uh, that that item was obviously overpriced yeah Pretty simple right there. So we're gonna open up our book here. So you can see the crystallized energy was the item that I was trying to sell, number 23 there on the left. And then on the right, it tells you your selling and reactions. You can see on the far right that I tried to sell it for 170 gold and it was not it was not good. But I sold it for 100 gold and he was very happy, content. There's also two more. If you sell it for too cheaply, they'll have the little gold in their eyes and be like, aha, it's so cheap. And then you lose money because you could have sold it for 100 and you sold it for 70 instead, as an example. And then there's kind of a dull face where they could buy it or they couldn't buy it, but it's not quite there, but it's close. Then you can also see his popularity. There's three bars. Right now it's at neutral. It could be very in demand or very out of demand. So if it's, in, if it's really necessary and people really want it, you can sell it for more. And if it's very, you know, unnecessary, people don't want it, it's not in demand, then you can sell it for cheaper otherwise they won't pick it up even if the price is right so the book is very important all right let's Okay, time to go to the dungeon. All right, so he's gonna rest and I'm gonna go to the dungeon. So we'll do our first uh, first dungeon raid. It's still tutorial though, so we have to go through this fully before we can have full freedom. But let's hop into this one. So this far left one is the uh, Golem dungeon, which is the first dungeon. And it pops us out. Golem Dungeon Floor 1. 
So Sword and Shield, you have this little three strike. The third strike being kind of a critical hit, doing 50 damage, which is double. And then the other, the spear had a nice special where it would do that charge attack, but the Sword and Shield doesn't, it has a shield. So I can use this shield, it slows down my move speed a little bit, and I can block attacks from that direction, which is very, very helpful. Alright, so let's go with this one. So, these guys, they're kind of hard. With Sword and Shield, the best thing to do is to attack once, and then just block. You just trade one for one. It's kind of slow going with those guys, because they actually have a lot of attack speed. They'll attack you really quickly, so you have to attack and then guard right away. That's the best way to do it. If you're using any other weapon when you fight those guys, you attack and then you just roll away. But you see how there's a delay with Sword and Shield? There's a lot of animations here. So it's really hard to do that against those golems. They can usually hit you in that, that frame while you're running away. You have to be really quick. But look how fast you can pull out your shield. Instantly. Pretty much instantly. Before your sword reaches its apex, you can pull out your shield. So it's a lot more effective against these guys to use the shield instead of rolling away. A little tip for you. And you take no damage, which is the best kind of trade. Uh, so I took damage there because I was my character was on the side when I put out my shield and he hit me on the corner on the side, um, which kind of feels feels pretty bad. These guys they shoot out three little shots and then they will pause and then change direction. So if I'm on the top side, they'll shoot to the top, shoot three. If I'm on the right side, they'll go to the right and shoot three. So once they start shooting in a direction, you want to change to the other direction and then hit them. Pretty simple. Alright, so I can't leave. There's some items over here, which is nice. And some items over here. And there's a little glint on these notes, so let's go take a read. Yep, so each guardian, guardians being the boss battles in each of the dungeons, they each have a key. So once you beat all of the um, boss battles in each of the dungeons, then you can unlock that fifth door to get the, to the mystery fifth dungeon. So let's go take out this guy. Big boss gonna kill me. I supposed to let them all out. Now have to chase this weirdo creature that stole my stuff. Uh, good old Pete. Gonna be upset. Alright, so here's a little diagram. Okay, good. And I got some extra items. So this little tutorial here, it shows you... Um, you put gold into that uh, pendant. And then you can teleport home with it. So at any time you can teleport home as long as you have gold. So I believe it costs 200 gold, and I have 300. So if I press and hold my B button, I can use my pendant to get home. So on the left, you have your weapons and armor, and whatever rings you have equipped. You have your personal items on your person, and then you have your backpack items. We talked about that earlier. Uh, it says you escaped with the pendant. That's what that little icon is. There's a number of ways you can escape dungeons, but... I used the pendant this time because that's just what I have available. And I killed six monsters and there were no chests. So kind of gives you a little detail of what, what you did while you were in the dungeon. Which I like personally. And it spits me out over at home. There's old man Z.
So on the center, <coughs> on the center area here, on this bulletin board, you can buy investments in the town or shops around this town. So let's go take a look. So we're gonna do investments in the town, and there's these five people. These five people with five different types of <coughs> uh, ways you could increase the town. So we've got a forge, Falcon's Forge. So he lets you build weapons and armor, which is nice. And then there's the wooden hat, and this shop will let you buy potions and make potions, and also enhance or enchant your weapons and armor. So you can buy weapons, then make the weapons and armor even stronger at the shop, which is very nice. But it costs 500 gold coins, and I have 100, so I can't do that. So let's head to the shop, and we'll go to bed, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll reset in the morning. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. I'll get back to you in the next episode. See you soon. Bye-bye.